Hello everyone and welcome to another DeweySoft X3 new features webinar. My name is Matiz and in this one we're going to take a look at the functionality that has become available with service packs 8 and 9. To start off, I just want to quickly remind you that with each version that we upload to our webpage, we also publish a newsletter um, and that's basically just an article with some short descriptions of each feature and also it contains some additional resources links. So if you find something interesting, you can then funnel up on that exact feature. So if you haven't read that yet, I would strongly recommend that you check it out. Uh, the way that I've structured this webinar is um, I've split different uh, modules basically um, on their functionality type. Um, so we're just gonna run through them and then at the end, uh, I'm also gonna do a live demonstration of some of the new features. So to start off, most importantly, we've got a couple of new application modules. Um, in this case, they're both sound related. So we've got sound quality and break noise. Now, um, as these are kind of fully fledged application modules, um, we could spend hours talking about them, uh, but that's not really the purpose of this webinar. So I just want to point out that uh, for both of those, uh, we have dedicated applications pages on our website, also linked in this presentation. Um, those pages contain just the basic information what the module is able to do, what kind of analysis it's able to perform, also what kind of instruments you might need in order to perform uh, this analysis. Uh, they both have manuals um, and for break noise, uh, my colleague Luca, who's the developer of the module, also did a webinar, so um, feel free to check that one out. On the device side, uh, service packs eight and nine also feature some new devices, uh, mainly the OXTS uh, real-time series GNSS device. So the one that we see on the picture right here. Uh, this is basically an Oxford navigation unit. Uh, it can be connected along with other DeWeSoft devices um, and synchronized together with them. A very similar situation with ADMA Ethernet, so this is basically a new product uh, from Genesis, and you can acquire its data in DeweySoft as DeweySoft channels uh, over the Ethernet, and again, sync it up with other DeweySoft hardware. Um, I've also added barcode scanners in here, so this isn't exactly a device that's supported, uh, but the plugin, what it actually does is it's able to parse um, the content of barcodes and then um, sort it into DeweSoft's data header. Um, the types of barcodes that you can use are QR codes, data matrices, or linear barcodes, or one-dimensional barcodes. Um, and then they can either be scanned using a video camera or uh, hand using handheld devices like the one that we see on the screen right here. Um, one thing that I think is worth uh, quickly mentioning is that in DeweSoft, if I go to settings, all of the devices, even the ones that are implemented via plugins, are now added through this interface here. So, for example, if I scroll down, I see the DSNet and the DSIMU, and I already have added the ADMA Ethernet device and also the Oxford device. Um, th this kind of makes, um, allows us to list all of the devices in one device tree. Uh, which also makes a lot of more sense when you need to synchronize them together. So the synchronization setup is kind of unified now. Um, and the reason that the barcode scanner device is not there is because that's not actually kind of a device, it's more of a parsing plugin. Uh, moving on, um, some new protocols. Um, in this case, we've supported Scent, which I think is mainly used in the automotive industry. So the way this works is um, you need to supply DeweySoft with a digital signal, um, which gets processed on the counter channel. And then basically the sent module takes the data from the counters and decodes it. Mm, maybe not directly related to DeweySoft X3 in a sense that um, not every user is gonna notice this, but we've added interfaces for processing in visual control plugins which you can now develop on your own. So, um, so for visual controls, I think that's more self-explanatory. If you wanna implement a different way of visualizing data, then this plugin is for you. 
uh, processing. What does that mean? Well, it's basically kind of advanced mathematics. Uh, I might say it's a step above the C++ script. So while the C++ script is very convenient, very useful, user-friendly, um, it might have some limitations um, in terms of just its raw performance or maybe even some user interface limitations. So if you run into those, then the processing plugin is the perfect solution for you. Uh, both of those are thoroughly described in pro trainings. Um, they have Visual Studio examples. So um, if you're looking to extend Dewisoft in any number of ways, I think these are worth checking out. On the visual side, um, the map has again uh, received quite an extensive improvement. So now it features elevation data. Uh, this again is hosted on Dewisoft server. So straight out of the box with SP9, um, you basically just uh, choose the 3D mode and Dewisoft satellite layer, um, which will be able to load um, now elevated data. The only thing other than that that you need is, of course, an internet connection just for the initial download at least. Um, to accompany the map, we've also added the 3D model. So if I move my camera a bit out of the way, uh, this is kind of an example of it right here. It basically shows the orientation of the object that we're monitoring. And for all map users, um, there's been quite a significant performance boost. So what we've done is we've basically ported um, the implementation has been changed from OpenGL to DirectX. And what that means is that um, we now support a wider variety of graphics cards. So um, if your PC previously wasn't able to load the map, um, it, there's a high chance that it will now work on that same PC with SP9. Um, and for users, for existing map users, you should also be able to see um, quite a significant performance boost. So, um, due to that change in the implementation. It's hard to exactly quantify um, how much the performance has increased, but just testing it out in the office, we were able to see quite a significant difference. A couple helper modules that I think are worth mentioning. So first off, the kinematic cursor editor, um, as you can see on the picture right here. This is basically, um, we've made a separate interface uh, for kinematic cursors. Uh, it's done in a very similar way to how Dewisoft handle analog sensors or counter sensors or even physical quantities. It's kind of the same editor um, with an XML database behind. So um, it's just a more of a convenience feature for managing your uh, bearings and your cursors. The Notifier plugin is a direct successor of the SendMail plugin. Um, its setup is visible here on the screenshot. Um, compared to send mail, uh, what the notifier does better is uh, you can send custom notification messages. Uh, you can use multiple notification conditions, which are tied directly to alarms. And you can also um, send different types of notifications. So not just email, you can also do HTTP post notifications. And on top of that, uh, you can set up multiple notifications. So um, in the same way that basically all of Dewisoft modules are designed, um, you can have multiple tabs which are used to set up different notifications. If you had already purchased SendMail, then um, you can use that license also with the Notifier module. And finally, complex presentation. This is kind of a minor add-on. Um, its purpose is to simplify breaking down the complex channels. So, if we have a couple of complex channels and we need to extract their uh, components, so let's say the real part or the imaginary part, uh, what we had to do before is write a separate formula for each of them. Now you can just use um, this minor module, um, select your input channels, and then select basically tick boxes of which components you want to output. So it, it saves some time. And finally, but I think most importantly, is the improved user experience. So I don't think it makes sense to show just the slide here. Um, so let's just switch over to Dewisoft. Uh, what I've done here is I've uh, prepared a quick demo. So right away, what you can copely notice the difference uh, are all the icons, which have been redesigned from the ground up to kind of fit with the new design. 
um, just the, the orange flat team. Um, I think now everything kind of fits together very nicely. Um, since we're in channel setup, I just want to again quickly remind you, if we, for example, take a look at sound quality, um, if we press F1, do we soft will automatically search for help it's going to try to open online help so in this case it goes to manual.doesoft.com and it opens up the sound quality page which contains the manual that i mentioned before so i think that's a very neat and useful feature um, for any time that you need more information about something um, so what I've done here is I've basically uh, added pretty much all of the modules that we've discussed before. So you see ADMA Ethernet, Oxford, Sound Quality, Send, Barcode Scanner, as well as Break Noise. Um, and now if we switch to measure mode, um, I've kind of predefined a display. Uh, let's switch to a module. This is the 3D module widget that I was talking about before. Uh, you can see that the airplane um, moves around based on the uh, orientation uh, information that we receive in the form of the navigation channel. Um, but what I actually wanted to talk about here is the display management redesign. So um, you can notice that there are three different buttons um, from, from the past iteration. So first off, uh, management of displays. Uh, this has been moved to a separate window, kind of everything on the display level is now managed through here. So what you can see is that we can select uh, different displays, move them up and down. So for example, if I wanna move the power screen to the bottom, I can do that using the arrow. I can also add new displays, either main displays or sub displays. Uh, I can also delete them, change their icons, rename them, or attach them to different monitors. Um, so you were already able to do that, all of that before, uh, but it was done via the right-click button, um, which wasn't the most intuitive option, and a lot of people didn't know about it. So I think now it's a lot easier to manage all of your displays just through a single window. Um, Maybe important to mention what we have left uh, on the right click is the rebuild displays option. So for example, uh, modules that are able to create their own displays, such as the power module, for example, or the power analyzer, I should say. So for example, if I um, change something in the default screen, but then later on I decide I want to uh, return back um, to the originally generated screen, I can just right click on the display select the rebuild option and it's going to return to the original form okay so now if i switch to the recorder screen uh, which just shows the default recorder um, i want to demonstrate um, the new editing option so if we switch to design mode you'll right away notice that the ribbon with visual controls is no longer visible um, the reason for that is that we've moved all visual controls um, which are now called widgets, actually, uh, we've moved them to, the, to a different interface. So this is pretty much the same kind of menu uh, as we have in channel setup or in math, so you should already be familiar with it. So the first tab shows the favorites, which you can also manage. So if there are only a couple of widgets or visual controls that you're using, um, you can just um, favorite them and they'll always be displayed up front which is kind of more convenient for you and it's a lot easier to find them. Um, you can also check out the all view, uh, which self-explanatory shows all of the available uh, widgets and you can search for them using the bar here. So let's add a digital meter. Um, right away, what you notice is that um, it is kind of um, surrounded by an orange color. It's indicated up top um by the by the widget's name you also see a menu so if you click on this um, it brings up the different functions that can be performed um, so just basically bring the front bring the back and different ways of copying the widget 
Um, so this before and still is also available um, by right clicking on the control. But again, this is kind of not obvious. So I think the menu button makes much more sense. You also have the X over here, which basically deletes uh, the widget. So, but let's let's back, let's add it back in. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the recorder. Um, I'm gonna place this one in the middle um, compared to the uh, control input up top. Then I'm gonna copy the widget here. I'm gonna keep it in line and place it in the middle of this one. So what I've done here is uh, when I move around uh, these screens, uh, you can see the new alignment functionality in action. So basically this is trying to align the control that I'm currently selecting with some of the ones that are already already placed on the screen. So this is really convenient uh, for setting up bigger displays if you want to perfectly align everything before you kind of had to eyeball it. Um, now we have this nice um, helper tool to aid you in uh, screen alignment. Also what I've done, but you probably missed it, um, for copying uh, widgets, for copying controls, you can now use shortcuts. So I basically used Control C, place my mouse somewhere else, and then use the Control V uh, shortcut to again uh, to to paste the control, which is super convenient. It's been requested a million times, so now we finally have it. Um, yeah, you can also use Control X. So for example, which performs the cut operation if I move to a different display. Uh, Press Control V again. Now we have this display available uh, in the custom screen. Moving back to the recorder, um, also uh, keeping up with shortcuts. Uh, same thing for design. So you can just use Control D to either enter or exit design mode. And finally one of the brand new features that's still in the experimental phase. So if I go uh, to settings and search for undo, uh, choose the second one, uh, you can see that it directs me to the experimental features and I basically enabled undo and redo shortcuts in design mode. So what this means is if I switch back to measure mode, um, go to design using control D, now I can copy, align, paste, let's put this one in the middle, maybe add a new one. Like this. So what I've done now is I've performed several actions and now using control Z, I can basically undo them. And then using control Y, I can redo them again, which is super convenient if you if you mess something up and would like to go just maybe one step or a few steps back. Um, and it's also been one of the features that's been um, highly requested in the past. The reason that this is experimental um, or under experimental is because what we're basically doing at the background is we're copying and saving the XML structure of the entire display. So. Um, each time you perform a certain action, um, the, the XML structure gets saved. So I think we save about 10 steps. Um, so for example, if you had, uh, let's say, big images or really, really, really complicated displays, perhaps there could be some performance issues. So we're still kind of testing that out, but so far it looks pretty good and um, it might make it to um, out of experimental pretty soon. Okay, so with that, um, this concludes the webinar about the new features of X3, SP8, and SP9. So I would strongly recommend that you download SP9, um, leave any and all feedback at support.doisoft.com, and thank you very much for your attention. Bye.